Let's go over then this macro view about what this is all about. So we're gonna go over the basic you know, state of the art right now, talk about the ecosystem, and also take a look at a 10 year view of where this industry might be going. So in terms of a basic overview, a lot of people ask the fundamental question, well, how does this all differ from cryptocurrency and ICOs? As a video said, we're looking at three different waves of what we would call a new financial internet, where the first wave is about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, great to use for payments, but you don't need escrow capability for payments. You know, the second wave, ICOs, you want to raise money, and so that's what happened. Billions were raised. Some people would say $13 billion were raised, often in a non-compliant way. Third wave is what we're talking about today that we're going to be launching in the next few minutes. You're here, you have the coin. Do you all have your coins? Yes, you should have this coin because this is, yeah, you got to make sure the red dot's on top and you put it beside your face. Take that selfie, you know, for your kids because you were here, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out on what could be the next big thing. This is to, it's better than a t-shirt. It's to show you, you were here, you see. So do, do the selfie, you'll be up on the, uh, on the launch wall board. Okay, so third wave, you know, security tokens, that's why we're, that's why we're here today, okay? So this chart showed that over the last, you know, a year, 2017 to where we are now, about $13 billion has been raised, peaking, as you can see, around the end of last year, January, et cetera. And so the ICO trend, as we all know, is, is going down, and that's because the industry needs a do-over. They need something like security tokens that have elements of being compliant with regulations. The main applications, the use cases of security tokens are really, really important. Sometimes people get confused about these, but there are three. One is to raise money for startups, for companies that are operating, like an ICO or an IPO. Startups don't necessarily have a lot of assets. They may go out of business. They're very risky. That's why in your asset allocation portfolio, it's only a small amount, five or 10% of risky you know, types of investments. The next box, securitization of real estate. Real estate is a little bit more secure. You invest in commercial residential real estate, the building burns down, you've got insurance, there's land value, etc. So you wanna unlock that value sometimes through, uh, you know, through security tokens. The third use case is what I would call the crypto fraction, fractional ownership of things like cars, special cars. Sometimes people wanna fractionalize art, etc. These are the three dominant use cases you'll hear talked about in the industry. Now, what are the benefits? Certainly one of the benefits is 24 by seven trading. If you wanna buy something on Amazon, you don't have to wait for the bell to ring 9.30 in the morning. Same thing, that's where this industry is going. 24 by seven trading, buying and selling, etc. But there's other benefits such as efficiency. Some, uh, some estimates have said that Wall Street could save over $5 billion a year utilizing blockchain and other related technology. Speed, the compression and reduction from a trading and settlement time of T plus two to T plus zero is one of the aspirations and realities of this industry. So that's great in terms of speeding things up, reducing naked short selling, and making things more efficient. If you're a day trader, that could be useful to you. Not everyone wants speed. Some people, some industries want to live off the float of having it there you know, a while longer. Liquidity, of course, the promise is better liquidity. The industry is not yet identified from a quantitative point of view what a liquidity premium really has been. Maybe that'll be another year based on some companies I've talked to. So the concept is improving liquidity or reducing the illiquidity discount. Uh, we'll see what the quantitative measures uh, of that are over the next uh, year or so. So what are security tokens? There are a diversity of opinions about what security tokens really are. Some people would say security tokens are a way that is compliant with regulations to raise money, unlike ICOs. That's one very common definition and it's a very important aspect. It's not simple because there's regulations all over the world as countries go through what we call a regulatory journey. So in the U.S., primarily it means Reg D, 506B, 506C. There's only 30 words here, you know. Once you know the 30 words, you've already got your bachelor's degree because you've gone over seven of the 30 words, so you'll be there. Okay, so Reg D, and then if you're international, of course, you know, it's Reg S, you know. 
So there's a few other words there, but primarily Reg D, Reg S, and Reg D in the US means that it's not for everyone to invest in, it's for accredited investors for about 12 months, lock up, then when the lockups expire, then everyone can kind of jump in. So that's really the state right now in terms of the regulatory aspect. But there are other aspects of uh, security tokens have a technical foundation. Today, blockchain, of course, supports many different applications. In the financial area, they can support cryptocurrency for payments, as we talked about, funds transfer, et cetera, and they can support utility tokens. But in the security token space, there's something very important called smart contracts. And we're gonna hear later today from the founder of, and the author of the ERC20 token, Fabian Vorgesteller, who's here today. Uh, flying in from, uh, from Germany, so Vigay Desina, and welcome Fabian to uh, our event today. Um, so that's the state of the art today, but work is going on in terms of other types of protocols. They happen to be labeled ERC, Ethereum Request for Comment, but these protocols are not necessarily tied only to Ethereum, and they could potentially be utilized on other uh, blockchains that are out there. And I know you're all wondering, what do these uh, ERC letters mean? So for those of you that really want to know, you can write this down and memorize it, and Ozzy will ask you later on what these things mean. So let's shift now to the global ecosystem. Where are things going in terms of the participants in this industry? Commercial, public sector, et cetera. So from a commercial point of view, it's very interesting. About six months ago, we thought well, there's maybe 20 companies participating in the security token industry. Now we've inventoried about uh, 220. So you can imagine six months from now where that's gonna be. We're in the process of compiling a very exhaustive uh, directory of the participants. Here you can see some of our security token corporate members. Uh, that we have inventoried on our platform. So this list is growing uh, dramatically. Some of these companies support primary issuance and secondary trading. Some of them are more infrastructure companies such as broker dealers, transfer agents, escrow, uh, other types of companies, marketing, legal. Do we have any legal folks in the room today? Okay, Jennifer, Amy, Ozzy, okay, a few others. Thank you, thank you for coming today. Uh, commercial participants, really important. There's also the question about where do they come from. It's very interesting. Some of them come from the cryptocurrency field, some from um, crowdfunding, some from startups, and some from you know, traditional Wall Street and traditional finance, as you'll hear later today. So again, some of the initiatives we have in the Security Token Academy are to keep track um, of the evolving industry, as Lindsay said, through the directory, through other initiatives. We also wanna make sure we understand reality by having a series of interoperability demos. Interoperability is really important if you wanna unlock liquidity. So we want to encourage vendors to show how they interoperate with each other, especially if you're an exchange, you don't want your investments locked in one exchange. So when you're trading, you wanna make sure that you have interoperability with the different exchanges. By the way, <coughs> very interesting. We've now inventoried about 50 to 60 companies around the world that aspire to be security token secondary trading organizations. Yes, sometimes we will use the word exchange as a shorthand, and yes, in the United States, most of them are really gonna be ATSs as opposed to exchange, but technically they're secondary trading organizations, but you'll hear us use the, um, the word exchange as, as kind of a shorthand there. So on the national, international front, there's about uh, two dozen or so company, countries that aspire to be somewhat involved in the security token industry. And they're a little bit conflicted because often the regulators want to shut things down, but you know, the, uh, the leaders of countries often really don't want to miss out on what could be the next big thing. They have FOMO, fear of missing out on the next big thing. They'd want to miss out on the next internet, and they don't want to miss out on crypto, and they don't want to miss out on security tokens. So they're all going through kind of a regulatory journey of trying to figure out how much do they open it up and how much do they kind of you know, constrain it. So that's the landscape on a national, international footing, but you know, in the United States, we have 50 states, blue sky laws. They all have their own regulatory position and thoughts on this whole space. And there's special states, as we know. There's Delaware, where a lot of corporations are funded, founded. And there's uh, Wyoming, and of course, state of New York. They have their own special opinion about regulations, what they should be, and how they should be enforced. And, you know, in terms of enforcement, we all know Chuck Rhodes, right? So this is very important in terms of making sure we're on top of things because no one wants to have Chuck Rhodes knocking at their door, okay? 
So the issues of the regulatory journey are important worldwide. In the United States, Canada with 10 provinces, they have different opinions on this. So the regulatory landscape is changing, flowing. It's not really easy to see how this could go. A major use case for security tokens is to utilize with somewhat illiquid assets such as real estate. Is there anyone here in addition to Aussie that's involved in real estate? Terrific. So whether it's the commercial uh, real estate sector, which is estimated worldwide to be about $32.3 trillion, or whether it's the residential area that is estimated to be $168 trillion, these numbers are bigger than billions. I don't know what Chuck is going to do. I think they need to rename the show from billions to trillions, be more in line with you know, the security token trends here. So really, whether it's improving uh, premiums or whether it's reducing the haircut or the discounts that you have to have if you want to get out of a real estate deal early, uh, these are some of the aspirations of the uh, security token industry. And how many of you saw the, um, the tokenization of the uh, 30 million dollars of condos in New York just in the last couple of days. Yeah, so this is, this is starting to happen. Okay. Where is the industry going to be in the next 10 years? So let's take a look. One of the aspirations of the security token industry is to see how it can execute on a worldwide basis. And worldwide basis in part you know, relates to cross-border trading and potentially a cross-border trading premium. But that's complicated because of KYC and AML, and there's some other initials in there like you know, CYA and NSA, but we're not going to get into those. The red box here means it's a problem, it's complex, and if you don't believe me, here's a slide based on some numbers from IBM that says, here's some of the metrics relating to the cost and the complexity of KYC and AML. Very costly. So to some degree, it's not really viable if you have an issuance that you want to have in a number of different countries. How are you going to do this? And so the hope is that perhaps the security token industry can provide some type of technology to be a technological intermediary to deal with this complexity. Now, when you have international laws, wouldn't it be great if they all work together? That's called harmonization. Do you think 30 countries, 50 states, 10 provinces are going to agree? No. And since the technology is changing every few months, how are they going to keep up with it? So this, this dream of having harmonization of all the countries uh, working together, I don't see that's happening. So what I foresee is something that I'll call regulatory interoperability uh, that we need to have. And some people in this space, this gentleman from Acuity says, one of the main challenges is the systems that companies have, they're not evolving fast enough. And so as I said, I think the, the solution of this is really to have more regulatory interoperability that recognizes the individual aspirations of different regulators as opposed to harmonization where they all have kind of a California kumbaya. I know you're from New York, Aussie, but you know, California, we say everyone. Okay. So the question is, how is this going to work? Is there some, what are, the, what are the problems in terms of this interoperability and how could it work together? So, you know, I, I happen to have a, a background in technology. Uh, I started a company after 30 years, I sold it to IBM. So, I'm going to share with you some insights that I've never talked about before, but you're special, so I'm going to share these with you. Okay? So when you have oil in a car, the purpose of oil in the car is to lubricate the engine. Now, Ozzy and I talked about this earlier. He says oil is good for maybe 5,000, 6,000 miles or maybe six months, et cetera. And after that, the oil is no longer a lubricant. Well, you know, software, custom software in a large corporation is also a lubricant. It's a lubricant for processes. Again, we're talking custom software. And that's the case whether it's within a, a company or whether it's across companies and it's in an industry such as the financial services industry. But if you don't change the oil in the car, it turns to sludge. And similarly, in a company, an enterprise, or a financial services industry, if you accumulate all this custom software and it doesn't change, it creates sludge so to speak, for a whole industry. And there's kind of a half-life concept involved. For a car, again, this is Aussie statistics, not mine. Maybe you've got six months, maybe you've got a couple years before the lubricant in your car is beneficial and then it hits the, uh, the curve where it's no longer beneficial and it starts to erode the, uh, the capability in the, uh, in the car. Same thing in an industry. Maybe you've got 10 years before the beneficial aspects of software are good and then they're not so good and then you accumulate what I call software cholesterol. 
These are terms of art I made up. Sulfur cholesterol uh, that can clog the corporate arteries or the arteries of an industry. And what does this really mean technically? So over the last several years, large financial services companies have done dozens and dozens of acquisitions. Along with the acquisitions come a lot of different IT systems with incompatible systems. Guess what? They never get completely replaced or integrated. This is legacy cholesterol that builds up within a single company. Guess what? There's maybe 50, 100 top financial companies that need to work with each other. Their systems sometimes need to work with each other. So the picture is really all of these systems working with each other. Now you're going to say, this is history. No, this is not just history. This is the future. Why? Because large corporations are going to be acquiring more and more crypto companies. It's going to be happening faster and faster. This is the past, this is also the future. So it's a really big problem. And then when you put on top of this the, uh, all the different uh, regulatory agencies around the world, it's a really big problem. So the solution to this in part is to have more component-oriented approach and SOA. We're not talking about sons of anarchy. Okay, service-oriented architecture, the componentization of objects or components as well as special services, et cetera. It's a common approach in software. And it's a common approach that I think security tokens might enable going forward. So what does this mean from a, from a layered point of view? What we're trying to do in, in uh, Security Token Academy is we're creating an initiative called the Core Foundation Project and the participants are Jor Law uh, over here from Verify Investor, and we have Fabian, uh, and we have David Weald also on our committee, and they're gonna help us understand what are we gonna do in the committee to uh, identify different components and how they work together. So the first part is, what are some of the components? There's classic components or objects. There's new ones coming along. But for the security token industry, we need to really identify what are the key components. These are some, but there's a lot of TBDs that we don't know yet in the industry. And then the more complicated issue is, how do they work together? And then finally, what's a timeline where they might evolve you know, over the next few years or so? It's gonna take a few years to obviously figure this stuff out. If we are able to put these things together, then you can read the promise of some of the benefits. Fast responsiveness of the ecosystem. But the bottom line is the last bullet there. Enabling faster financial services ecosystem evolution. The financial industry wants to move faster and faster. We just don't want to accumulate a second wave or a third wave of software cholesterol. We want to make sure it's enabled by having what's called technically decoupling. So that's where the industry is really headed. And we want to thank you for joining in our event today as we celebrate, get your coins ready, as we celebrate the launch of the security token industry. Thank you very much.